to be or not to be? That is the question. Weather snowboard in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows about rageous fortune or to take arms against a sea of trouble and by opposing end them to die to sleep no more and by asleep to say we end the heartache and the thousand natural shocks that flesh is heir to tis a consummation devoutly to be wished to die to sleep to sleep. Pertance to dream. Hi, I'm Per Jansen. I'm the director of Opera House Arts. And I want to start by thanking everybody who helped us make that video. We originally made this video for a production of Hamlet that we had planned for this summer. It was going to be our 20th anniversary celebratory production of Shakespeare in Stonington. We were going to tour Hamlet throughout the Blue Hill Peninsula to Isla Ho, even as far as the Maine State Prison, and we've had to postpone that tour uh, until next year. Um, it was also going to be our 20th year in a row of offering the Deer Isle Jazz Festival. We've had to postpone that as well, as well as so many other things we had planned for this summer. Um, but that speech takes on a new resonance as we face the existential threat of the pandemic uh, alongside many other performing arts organizations around the world. Um, it is always our aspiration to be a kind of community living room or hearth for this community. Um, I've loved witnessing that in the past with things like Sea Time Stories last year where at the end of the event it it erupted into a spontaneous storytelling session after the performance was over. Uh, one of my favorite memories last summer was uh, when we had Happenstance Theater for a Live for Five performance in July and the place was packed. We had strollers in the aisles. We had to put in extra seats in the back. Um, we were probably in violation of the fire code. <laughs> and when Pam Ghetto went up to make the announcement, uh, at the beginning of the show, one of our very, very young neighbors, Lydia, joined her up there holding a bag of popcorn. And it was this lovely moment where she dropped the bag of popcorn and it was pure clown right before this happenstance clown circus performance. And the happenstance clowns in the wings loved it. And it was just this, you had to be there moment um, that all of us know, you know, only happens with live performance, uh, which we're very sorry not to be able to offer in our spaces this summer. Um, so in lieu of that, we're, we're continuing to explore different ways that we can serve as a kind of virtual hearth for the community. Uh, we're offering a weekly interview program called Coffee on the Couch that we have loved hearing the stories of our neighbors. We're planning a virtual gala for July 6th that we hope very much you'll join us for. Um, we're investigating other possibilities for what we can offer online. Um, but we know it's not the same thing. Um, and so when we're asking for your support this year, it's, it's to support the very existence of the Opera House. Um, speaking of sort of virtual hearths, one silver lining for me of being cooped up here at home has been uh, a weekly Zoom with my family. We had one this past weekend for Mother's Day where we were playing a board game <laughs> that my nieces had created. And uh, there's, if you land on a, a certain kind of square in this board game, then everyone has to answer the question. And one of the questions last week was, what is your earliest memory? And my younger sister and I discovered that we both, <laughs> independent of each other, have uh, the same early memory, which is of having our diapers changed in our family's den by our dad, and not our mom, <laughs> uh, but by our dad, and probably because he wasn't as gentle. Um, but it got me thinking about these virtual hearths that are that are happening in the midst of this pandemic on this island, around the country, all over the world. Uh, families gather together to watch movies, TV shows, uh, streaming plays, operas, what have you. Um, thinking back to my childhood, 
in Toledo, Iowa, a small town, um, that happened to have a theater like our town built in 1912, but that, that wasn't used for live performance. Um, our, <laughs> our virtual hearth was our little TV and VCR player where we would play classic movies, many of which we had taped from when they were on ABC or NBC or what have you. And, uh, one of our favorites was this 1960 Mary Martin version of Peter Pan, and that memory of that show just just came back to me as after the family Zoom we had this weekend. And there's this moment you might remember from from Peter Pan, where uh, in this version Mary Martin turns to the camera, uh, you know, Tinkerbell. It's this moment where Tinkerbell is about to die, and she says, "Clap if you believe in fairies." and um, the lovely thing to me about that moment, as, as, as sort of manipulative as it is, uh, is that it acknowledges that performance is a two-way street. <laughs> that, and this is obviously especially true of, of the kind of live performance that we love doing every summer. Uh, the performers can't do it without the audience. Uh, we need you uh, to make it happen. Um, and that's what makes it magical. And, and that moment in Peter Pan, whether it's a stage version or the movie version, acknowledges that. They break the fourth wall to acknowledge that. And it's so lovely. And it, it sort of it made me realize this is our Tinkerbell moment. Um, this is the clap if you believe moment for us as an organization, as for so many other performing arts organizations. Um, in the in the original, you know, Tinkerbell has swallowed poison to protect the health of Peter, so that he doesn't swallow that poison. The poison that performing arts organizations such as ours uh, has now swallowed, uh, have now swallowed, is shutting our doors, so that we are cut off from the sustenance of ticket revenue. Uh, concessions revenue, underwriting, and uh, advertising revenue. Um, so this is where the only thing for us to do is to turn to you and say clap if you believe, and by clap we mean donate. Um, so please, please give if you can. Uh, I'm very grateful to announce that thanks to the generosity of a few lead donors, um, if you're a first-time donor, anything that you donate will be matched 100%. If you're a returning donor, thank you. And anything that you give over last year will be matched. Uh, this is a $25,000 matching campaign. Um, so please give now, whatever you are able, and we're deeply, deeply grateful for your support.